feel bad for you. I don't think about you at all. Forbes just released a list of the American universities with the most billionaire alumni. And although I attended none of them, and therefore you can safely assume my net worth is not 10 figures, the article did capture my attention. It's kind of fascinating how these schools have mad advantages over others with this kind of network. And I suppose it is interesting to look at the actual quantity here. This list is about the total number of billionaires who went to these schools, not the net worth of alumni that can be skewed by an outlier. These examples are theoretically more empowered colleges since they have to worry less about pissing off the biggest fish in a small pond. Of the 813 billionaires examined, the top five universities attended by them were Cornell with 13, Yale with 19, Harvard with 28, Stanford with 30, and number one was UPenn with 36. And that's the University of Pennsylvania, guys, not Penn State. And what did I do before then? You went to Penn State. I went to the state Penn. <laughs> Sorry, I thought Penn State was bad enough. Seven out of eight Ivies were on the overall list. Stay away from Brown University kids. And the big takeaway was that about a quarter of all billionaires came from just 12 universities. The five previously mentioned, and then, in order, USC, Princeton, MIT, Dartmouth, Columbia, Michigan, and Cal Berkeley. A few years ago, Forbes wrote that America's billionaires who attended college were more likely than not to have studied one of three majors, business, economics, or engineering, in that order. So, I suppose if you are a coin-operated prospective college student, you might want to apply to one of those 12 schools and declare one of those three areas of study. There isn't much discussion as to why these schools in this piece, and I suppose because it's fairly obvious. Stanford's proximity to Silicon Valley, Harvard's reputation, and then the compounding effect of billionaires making big honkin' donkey donations having a lot to do with it. Big endowment means big benefits for students. But hey, even if your alma mater isn't listed, you can still make your own way. There are mentions of the non-top 12 colleges that benefit from one or more big shots. Indiana University with Mark Cuban, Phil Knight with Oregon, and there are shout outs to Taylor Swift and LeBron James, who didn't even go. I did not go to business school. You know who else didn't go to business school? LeBron James, Tracy McGrady, Kobe Bryant. Forbes published the same list in 2021, and since then some billionaire college donors have passed away, like Charlie Munger with UC Santa Barbara, Jim Simons at Stony Brook, and in the past three years, Harvard dropped from number one to number three on the list. I really just wanted to read this for the numbers, but there was some commentary on how these types of donations can almost hold a university hostage. They can start to get dependent on this type of cash flow, and all of a sudden, if Robert Kraft does not like how Columbia is empowering protesters, he can take his checkbook elsewhere. The author cites Dick Wolf and Mark Rowan as instrumental in the resignation of school president Liz McGill last year at UPenn. Despite all of that, this article is a little bit shallow. Forbes does a lot of these exposés about billionaires, and you could probably get more out of some of the ones that focus on which ones are self-made or what industries individuals grew their wealth in. Yeah, but you know, I learned something today. If I learned anything from this article, it's holy shit, the IRS is asleep at the wheel with these endowment sizes. Since so few Americans actually get to benefit from these universities, maybe, just maybe, we should think about taxing them. Also, with lists like this, it's easy to understand how that whole Rick Singer college admission scandal with Aunt Becky went down in 2019. If you don't remember it, Netflix has a dramatized documentary called Operation Varsity Blues that explains everything quite well, even if the reenactments are kind of awkward at times. With this kind of money floating around these universities, you can see why parents are willing to do just about anything to get their kids into top schools. That's all I got this week. Thank you so much for checking the video out. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe.